What's up guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking to you about materials in Revit. So materials are very important especially if you want to get some amazing renderings and that's only the graphics parts. There's also a lot more information that goes into materials that, going, that are going to make your life a lot easier when working in Revit. But before I get started with this tutorial I would just like to ask you to like this video, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make videos like this every day. Okay, so let's get started. Here I am in Revit. And now to access materials, you need to go here to the Manage tab. And here you have this Materials option or Materials uh, command. And you just hit this icon. Let me just cancel out of this. And here you get this Materials Browser window. Let me just make it a bit smaller. Okay, so how does this work? So here you have basically all of the information about your material in this portion of the window. Then you have this here project materials library basically and you can scroll through all of the materials. Now these are project materials. What that means, these are the materials that are loaded in your project. So these are specific to the project you're working in. And if you change any of these materials, they, they will only change in this project. If you open up a new project, these will all stay the same as they did before you made the changes. So make sure to keep that in mind. And then underneath over here, you have your official Autodesk library. And if you can't see this window, you probably need to hit this over here. So you just hit this quadrant and you just open up this down here. So these are all of the materials you have loaded in your computer and these usually come with Revit software when you download Revit. And if you want to know how to download this free student version of Revit, check out the link in the description of this video. I have a tutorial on how to do that. Now here we have just basically all of the materials and they're nicely kept in folders so you can find maybe liquid so you have your water material here or you have your metals like aluminum stuff like that. So you can just search through the materials over here and then you need to load them into your project. So what does that mean? So here if I go maybe to fabric and I want to have some canvas material and I open this up, maybe I make this a bit larger, I like the way it looks, you see you have this little add materials to the document. And you just hit that and it basically loads this material from your computer into your project. So now this material is in your project and if you make any changes to this material, don't worry. These changes are project specific and they won't affect the materials that are saved on your computer. Okay, so let's go through these materials. So let's search and see, let's go with something like, I don't know, let's see what we have here yeah maybe go with this soft wood for example so this is lumber okay so here if you go you see all of the information about your material so first you have identity and here you can add the name of your material you can add the description the class or you can change the class to th this is basically the category in which Revit stores it over here when you go through these libraries so you can change that you can add some comments keywords you can type in the manufacturer of this wood if you know so if you're creating a material and you want to add the manu manufacturer you can add that here you can add the model the cost the URL so basically you can add a link that leads you to the website of the manufacturer of this wood so if you're a wood manufacturer it would be good to add your URL and then share this material with other people. And then if we go here to the graphics tab, this is something different. So this allows you to edit all of the, the graphics and these are for your hidden line views and your shaded views. So these are not the realistic ones. So if you change this color, this is basically the color when you go to shaded. This is the color that the material will, will appear at and if you're at hidden line it will appear just as white. And then if you go here you have some surface patterns and some cut patterns. Now since the Revit 2019 there have been some changes so you have this foreground and background hatches and if you want to learn more about the changes in Revit 2019 again check out the link in the description I have a tutorial on all of the changes that were made for this new version but anyway here I have just some foreground hatch and I can add maybe this hatch if I choose for wood and I can change its color I don't know maybe make it some wood-ish color 
I don't know, like that. So we have this hatch and then you can add a background hatch and this is for the surface pattern and for the cut pattern you can go and maybe make it solid and again make it some interesting color just to give it a little bit of soul. Okay, so this is all of the graphics for your kind of your technical views but if you want to go and create some renderings you need to go here to appearance and this will give you all of the information about your gr graphics in renderings so that's why it's called appearance and here you have this big window which shows you the material you can make it larger if you want and here you have this option and if you open up this drop menu you have this scene and then you can change it maybe you want it to have a sphere or you maybe wanted to have, I don't know, this object. Will it change? Okay, vase. Okay, it's not changing for some reason. Yeah, it won't do for wood. Okay, here it is. And then you can also add walls. That's important if you're creating some maybe brick material and you want to see how would it look like on a wall. And if you're creating some glass material, then you can choose a glass curtain wall. And again, depending on the material, you choose a scene. If you have some liquid, maybe you choose this. So this shows it like it's in a pool. And you can use, yeah, this object is usually used for in 3ds max if i'm not mistaken and it's a nice way to look at your material but anyway so here you see basically this is how you see your object and your your material and if i just make this a bit smaller you can see here we can add again all of this basic information and then here we have an image so this is just a bitmap or a jpeg image and this is the JPEG image that kind of that Autodesk kind of just glues on your material and then that's how it looks like in a rendering. And then you have this stain color. Now this is all specific to wood. As you can see here these are some wood options. But if I go here and change it to stainless steel and go to appearance you can see these now changed. Now we have this metal options. So we can change stainless steel, we can change it to aluminum or whatever, we can change the finish and we have just a bunch of other options and let's let's choose brick for example and if you go to brick again you have this masonry and then you can choose this you have your re relief pattern so this is kind of a black and white bitmap that uh, gives this this material kind of that as you can see that little depth that these individual bricks have Okay, so that's it for appearance, and then here you have your physical, and these are just the physical information. This is just the, the density over here, and here for thermal, you have some thermal information, so if you're doing some thermal analysis, this is where you'll be able to do all the settings. Now, you, you, sh you should probably know what all this stuff means before doing any thermal analysis. But anyway, so that's a quick rundown on how materials work in Revit. And now let's create a material of our own. So I like that Tadao Ando Concrete. And if I go here to Google and let's search uh, Tadao Ando Concrete and see what we get. So if we go here to images, we get some images and we have some of these. Let's see. This is a bit nicer, a bit bigger. Let's choose some bigger image. Let's see. Do we have anything even bigger? Yeah, this is just the one. I, I like to do at least like this four for these. Let's see. Let's see what we have. Yeah, I guess we can use something like this. Okay, so you just right click and you go save image as and I'm just going to save it on desktop. And here's what we have. So that's the image that Revit is going to be using and that's what we're going to load into Revit. And now if I minimize all of this and let me just find some concrete material. So let's just go here and concrete. Okay, and here as you can see, if I go to appearance, We've got a bunch of these concrete materials and if I go over here, they have the same options pretty much, except this with masonry units. But uh, as you can see here, we don't really have that finished bump, we only have that, but it's 
I don't like it but I want more options over here in the appearance tab so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and find some concrete over here maybe go with this lightweight concrete let's see let's load it in and yeah, as you can see now we have a lot more information. So depending on the material you choose in the beginning, you, you will have a lot more information. And let me change the scene to uh, to the wall. Okay, walls, because this is a concrete wall. Okay, so we have this lightweight concrete and now we want to load our own image and make our Tadawa under concrete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just right click over here and duplicate. So that's how you basically create materials in Revit. You need to find a similar material to what you want to create and then you just duplicate it and create your own. So let's just call this concrete Tadawa under. Okay, so this is our new material and for the image, I'm just going to select this link over here and that allows me to choose the image and let me just go to desktop and find our image and open it up. And as you can see, it looks kind of weird right now. I think it's too small. So you need to open up this drop menu and you go to edit image. And here, as you can see, this is now only 55 centimeters or 0.55 meters. So that's way too small. So I just need to change this sample size. So I'm just going to make it square. And let's see, I need to unconstrain this. Make this now point, point 0.55. Now I'm just going to constrain it. And then I'm just going to change this to, I don't know, like, let's do like three meters. Yeah, and as you can see, it's a lot larger now, or maybe 2.5. Yeah, I like it now. Okay, so once you've done this, I hit OK, and as you can see, this is how it looks like. It's real nice, but uh, it doesn't have any depth, so we want to add some depth, and you, de you add that using this bump option. Now, you need to load an image, but we can't use the same image because it's uh, the contrasts are not good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go apply, OK, and minimize Revit for a second. And here we have our image. And let me just right click and open it up with Photoshop. OK, so here it is in Photoshop. Let me just maximize it. Yeah, so now what we need to do for our bump map, we need to go here to brightness and contrast and bring the contrast up and let's see for the brightness we need to kind of make it these lines a bit darker let's see if I go here to contrast yeah kind of like that or what you can even do for these kind of holes that you have over here you can use the brush tool let's make it a lot smaller let's see let's do five yeah, perfect. And let's choose black. And here, let me go. Yeah, it's at 100. Create a new layer and just, okay, black. So just place these points over here. So these will be actually represented as a bit of a holes in our concrete. So I'm just going to go all the way around. Or I can maybe copy this. Kind of like that. Yeah, and let me do these. And I'm just going to select this and again, copy these over here and copy this down just to make these holes a bit darker. Okay, so I like the way this turned out. So I'm just going to save this image. So save as desktop and let me save it as JPEG and let's just call it bump and save and go OK and minimize all of this. Let's go back into Revit, go to material and let's find our concrete to dial Ando appearance and let's change our bump, add an image. Okay, you need to check this first. Now you add an image, so let's choose our bump image. And again, you need to edit the image to make it the same size. So this should be, what did they do? 2.5, yeah, done. And when you open this up, now this, as you can see, has a bit of a bump. As, as you can see, now it looks more realistic. And if I go over here, you can change the amount. So you can make it 
even deeper. Okay, this is way too much. Let's see. Give it a little bit of time, it's a large image. Okay, this is still too much. 50, too much. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, so once this is done, you just hit apply, okay. And then you can go to architecture and let's just place a wall, kind of like that. And let's do a camera, kind of like this. And maybe we can angle it towards the wall. And let's see, let's do select the wall, go into edit type, edit, and change the material, go concrete, down under, okay, apply, okay. And if I just hit double R for render and render this material, let's see what we get. And there you go. So we get our cool Tadao Ando concrete here in Revit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for future tutorials, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.